For decades, Canadians have known how dangerous asbestos can be, that it can cause severe respiratory problems, even lung cancer. That's killed the market for Canadian asbestos here at home, but not so in India. There, Canadian asbestos is used with practically no safety regulations and without warnings that it can be deadly. So why is Canada the last developed nation to still sell such a dangerous substance? Melissa Fung has more on Canada's ugly secret. This is one part of India you won't find in the tourist guides. It's called the Golden Corridor, an industrial strip that cuts through the northwestern state of Gujarat. A toxic trail of more than 31,000 factories and a seemingly endless supply of cheap labor. You'll find some of Canada's best customers here for a product that no one wants back home. Asbestos. In fact, last year India imported more than 40 million tons of the stuff making it our best customer. It's used everywhere here, in manufacturing, in construction materials. It's even spun into yarn to make heat-resistant fabric. Asbestos sales are breathing new life into a dying industry in Canada, but they're leaving a long trail of sick and dying workers here in India. So this is Canada's ugly secret. We stopped using asbestos in our own country because we know it kills, but we're happy to sell it to developing and third world countries where we know health and safety regulations are much less stringent. More than 40 countries around the world have banned asbestos, but not Canada. In fact, we're the last country in the developed world to still sell it. It's what some are calling foreign aid in reverse. In the teeming slums of Ahmedabad, it's known simply as the breathing disease. Most people here know someone who has it. It's the lower class area. <laughs> and uh, you, I saw that even uh, the temples had asbestos roofs. Gopal Krishna is an activist who has been pushing for a ban on asbestos in India. He's taken us into the slums to meet some of the people who have been working with Canadian asbestos. Workers now sick and dying. People like Jaigan Budar. He used asbestos to line the boilers at the city's electricity plant. No one ever told him it was dangerous. Narayan Prasad and his wife both dying from asbestosis. She got it from washing the dust off his clothes. Chinapanan Chinakanu. He can't afford to quit his job. He needs the money to buy medication. And Mangbai Patel. Doctors tell him he only has months to live. Not one of the workers we met with knew they were handling a product that could kill them. This trade is not stopped. There is no way asbestos diseases can be stopped. And I tell you, our estimates are that in days to come, we will, once the documentation happens, India will break the Guinness Book of World Records for asbestos diseases. Because there is hardly a place in India which is not asbestos laden. There is not private build, not a single private building, not a single public building which is not asbestos laden. In fact, they are preparing for the epidemic they know is coming by opening clinics like this one. It's being built just to treat respiratory diseases. The X ray plant. The X ray. Dr. TK Joshi is one of the foremost experts on asbestos related disease in India and the world. He says Canada should be helping treat patients, not create them. My message to the Canadian government is to become a leading light in opposing the use of all sorts of asbestos. Because when the, some generations down, the Canadians will read about their own history, they are going to ask themselves, how come is such a government, uh, I mean, such an enlightened government could be so apathetic and uh, so insensitive? 
The town of Thetford Mines used to be the center of asbestos mining in Quebec's eastern townships. Built by a once booming industry, it now lives largely in the shadow of its past. On the city's outskirts, the Black Mine, the only fully operational asbestos mine left in the country. It's owned by Lab Chrysotile and now employs fewer than 500 people. A far cry from the days when 17 mines employed thousands and Canada was the biggest exporter in the world. Back then it was still considered a miracle mineral, an export we could be proud of. But by the 70s, what some had suspected all along was now common knowledge. The miracle mineral was actually one of the greatest industrial hazards ever known. The markets in the Western world dried up quickly, as thousands of Canadians died of asbestosis and other related diseases. So the industry went looking for new customers in developing and third world countries. Every other developed country has given up on the habit. Why are we the last? Why are we at the back of the class? Amir Adaran is on the editorial board of the Canadian Medical Association Journal, and he's also the Canadian Research Chair in Global Developmental Policy at the University of Ottawa. The CMA Journal recently published an editorial he co-wrote, calling for Canada to ban the export of asbestos. In Canada, in the U.S., in Europe, in pretty well every developed country, we have gone to great lengths to not use it at all, or in only the very, very smallest quantities, because in advanced countries, it can't really be used safely. And then we think that in India it's going to be used safely? What nonsense. I, I cannot imagine how a developing country like India would be up to the job of using it safely when the United States, Canada, Europe are not. The industry owes its survival in part to the unflinching support it's received from the federal government. Over the years, both liberal and conservative governments have given it more than $20 million to teach the public that chrysotile, or white asbestos, is safe when it's used properly. So it's more than a little ironic that the federal government is also spending millions to remove chrysotile asbestos from the parliament buildings. Not safe for politicians, but safe for the third world. Anybody who talks about controlled use in the third world is either a liar or a fool. It's the kind of hypocrisy that angers Barry Castleman. He's written extensively on the dangers of asbestos and has been lobbying for a ban on exporting it. Well, the Canadians have provided one vital thing for the global asbestos industry, and that is a propaganda machine and a respectability at the international level. It's a quasi-criminal industry. Uh, they know they're killing people. They know it's not safe. And, uh, but they also know that there's money to be made as long as they can avoid the costs of prevention and compensation. The organization that receives those tax dollars is called the Chrysotal Institute, named after the only kind of asbestos that's still mined anywhere in the world. It's supposed to educate people and the media on safe ways to handle asbestos, but its president, Clement Godbou, seen here a few years ago in a Radio-Canada documentary, would not return our calls. If he had, here's what we might have asked him. What exactly does the Chrysotal Institute do with the tax dollars it receives? We know it likely used some of it to launch a lawsuit against asbestos victims in France after they dared criticize the industry for their disease. They only recently dropped that lawsuit. And then there are those pseudoscientific symposiums they hold to spread the good news about Chrysotile. Like this one they held in Indonesia in 2006. The asbestos industry's favorite researcher was there, but not a single scientist presenting peer-reviewed studies was invited or allowed to attend. The federal government was a prominent sponsor, holding a cocktail party for invitees. Canada's diplomats and Canada's embassies have been used 
to wine and dine potential customers for Canadian asbestos. Our diplomatic core are selling asbestos with morals lower than a used car salesman. They essentially shill for the industry. And what their role is, is to expand the market so Canada can export more asbestos. They really are merchants of death. It's as simple as that. The industry and the Canadian government's position on selling asbestos to countries like India rests on one premise. That even though asbestos can cause cancer and other diseases, it is safe so long as proper safety precautions are taken. That's what brought us to India to see if that's true. The power plant and the Ahmedabad cement factory are both big consumers of Canadian asbestos. Okay, okay. And nobody called me okay, back. Okay. I was in. Give me your number. Give us your number also. Neither would allow us in. The signs outside the Eagle India textile factory did not look good. Piles of loose asbestos, waiting for a breeze to carry it through the neighboring slums. But the owner invited us in to have a look. He wouldn't agree to do an interview. He's still waiting for his operating permit from the government. Proud to be a good customer, he pointed out the bags of Canadian asbestos piled high inside. And printed on those bags a warning in English and French to avoid creating dust and to wear proper respirators when handling the product. But the workers wore no protective clothing at all. Some had only a bandana tied over their noses. It was in their hair, their clothes, and most certainly their lungs. In conditions like this, under Canadian safety regulations, nothing less than a full respirator with a separate air supply would protect these workers from the poisons in the air. Grim, yes. Unusual, no, says Gopal Krishna. The chrysotile asbestos, if it is safe, why is it not used in Canada? Why is it that the House of Commons gets decontaminated of chrysotile asbestos? Use it safely in Canada and then preach to the world that it can be safely used. This is height of hypocrisy that you don't use it yourself and tell others to use it safely. That's the kind of thing that'll probably give you asbestosis five to ten years from the onset of exposure. These countries, their infrastructure is being built out of something that's, that's lethal. And these buildings they're putting up now are going to be around for 100 years. And every time somebody has to do renovations on these buildings, they're going to be creating dust that could, that could cause death and disease uh, to the people who do the work, to the people that live in the buildings and work in the buildings. The Ministry of Natural Resources is responsible for the industry. We tried a number of times to get an interview with the minister, Lisa Ray, but she said no. Then we tried Public Works Minister Christian Paradi, who's riding the remaining mines fallen. His press secretary stopped returning our calls. We thought we had an interview with the president of the last operating mine, Simon Dupere, but when we got to the mine's offices in Thetford, Quebec, he had changed his mind. So he's saying no. He doesn't want to be part of my story. No. There are those who say leave the industry alone and it will die a quiet death on its own. And that may be the government's strategy. After all, why risk losing votes in Quebec over something most Canadians don't know about? But then we found this, an ad from a Canadian mining company on an international trade website looking for investors to help mine a 30 million ton deposit of very high quality asbestos fiber in the same region of Quebec, close to Thetford. When we called, the president of the company said there was no interest and they are focusing their efforts on mining gold. The demand for asbestos in India continues to grow. And it's a demand Canada has been only too happy to meet. India now buys almost half of all our asbestos exports. We should stop selling it because it's harmful. There is a market for it in India, 
but we don't want necessarily as Canadians to have our country's name dragged through the mud because we're trying to make a buck any way that we can. If that were the rationale, I suppose we'd be selling weapons to child soldiers too. But even if Canada stopped exporting asbestos today, it will likely be too late for these workers in the Eagle India textile factory. The chrysotile fibers have probably already penetrated their lungs. Slowly, they will form a fibrous mass, cutting off oxygen and affecting their ability to breathe. Asbestosis, say those who suffer from it, is a long and painful death sentence. Melissa Fung, CBC News, Ahmedabad, India. Well, Melissa joins us now in our studios here in Toronto. Those last images, I'm sure, are going to be the ones that are going to haunt many Canadians who just watched this documentary tonight. They may haunt Canadians, Peter, but those workers that we met, those workers in that factory, they have no idea what they're dealing with. They have no idea that this is actually causing them harm. Um, may haunt us, but they are still there today working with that in those conditions. You know, one of the things I find fascinating about watching this piece of yours is that you had no trouble finding people who would speak out against asbestos, both here and in uh, India. Um, but you couldn't find anyone from industry or government or, or the special interest groups that support the industry willing to defend it. We did try everybody, as we tried to show you in the documentary, um, but their position, and they know that they are speaking out against an overwhelming body of scientific evidence that suggests that chrysotile asbestos is cancerous, is a carcinogen. The World Health Organization, the American Medical Association, the Canadian Medical Association, asbestos is an acknowledged carcinogen, and for the Canadian government to keep taking this stand is not a popular one. It's, it goes against the scientific evidence to support um, what we found. Well, it's great work, and uh, I know you'll be following this story. See where it goes from here. We'll see you if they pick it up in the House of Commons in the days ahead. Thanks, hope Melissa. So. Thanks, Peter. All right, the CBC's Melissa Fung. Coming up next, this story. I'm not on to be.